How do you manage to do it all, Eric? Everything that you do so well. Oh. What does it take? Ooh. Well, thank you for the compliment. Um, I guess my smoke and mirrors are working. Um, I'm going to (laughs) say the word that comes to mind is balance. Balance? Balance. How do you manage that? How did you how did you manage that? Mm, you know, it's uh it's it's interesting. I, I I don't know if I have the answer, but I do know that that is something that I focus on daily, if not uh every minute of the day, to try to find. Um how about you? Um you seem to juggle a lot of things, but don't come across as a juggler. You um <laughs> also uh have um, a lot of things going on and seem to be able to coordinate those things well. So it's it's the gray hair. They just people see the long gray hair, they think wise, wise person. Wise, right. And then they don't even question beyond that. Mm. Yeah. No That's wonder they think is. I'm a, a knucklehead because I shave my head. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah. 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 Well, I. Uh, I thank you for that compliment and the balance and being able to masterfully pay attention to your inner life and your outer responsibilities is something everyone struggles with. Mm -hmm. And this is also a step in the hero's journey that uh, Campbell refers to as the master of the two worlds. Master Ah, of the two worlds. I like that. That that one has a, it sort of rolls off the tongue a little easier than last time. (laughs) (laughs) He had better editors on that one. Yes. Yeah, yes. for sure, for sure. And um, in the, the two worlds that are being referred to in the, the mythological context are often the spiritual world and the material world. And while that exists for us as well, I think we can also simplify these understandings to our inner life and our outer life. And and how do we how do we become a master of those two things? And I guess part of defining what a master is, is, is having, as you said, this balance, this participation with both, where one doesn't seem to override the other, and there is a nice equilibrium so that your ride is pretty smooth, as opposed to being turbulent. Mm. Okay. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Shall we, shall we get on this topic? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Here we go. Welcome to the Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Hey, I'm Dan Green. And I'm Eric Stewart. And you are joining us for episode 17 17. of the Heart of the Cards. Yes. And we are almost done with talking about the hero's journey. We haven't hit every step along the way, but we certainly have hit most of them. And this one, the master of two worlds, as we were just describing, refers to this this sense of balance. And this is one of the final steps. This is actually the next two final steps. Mm. And uh, I think that a lot of our listeners can identify with that sense of dissatisfaction and tension and anxiety when they're struggling to find that balance better. There's something that they've always wanted to be or, or, or something that they've, they've uh, yet to attain. Right. And, uh, or, or perhaps there's something that they're stuck in and then they want to get rid of. And uh, that all speaks to an imbalance of, of where you're at and where you want to be mm-hmm. or who you want to be or both. Yeah. Yeah. So in this example that is provided to us in mythology, uh, I will say that I can I can kind of understand what they're referring to, but I would never call myself a master, really, of, of anything. <laughs> I'm pretty good at some stuff, but I do feel like I have benefited um, from experience uh, that I, I have overall more stability, more equilibrium than I did in my younger years. Yeah. So I feel like I'm getting better at finding that that balance. But I certainly would never describe myself as the master of two worlds. Well, I'll, I'll, then I'll call you the master of two okay, worlds. Okay, so, I'll let so you So I want, I want to hear your example of this, mm. of, of, of finding how you are the master of both worlds um, to those who uh, get to, to watch this from afar. I, I'm, right. I, yes, so, so yes. <laughs> so take the title. You, you, you can get, take the title from me. For those, for those that my life is but a, a, a poorly written sitcom, come. Um, (laughs) So I think I'll speak to things that have been happening recently because they're really important. And 
It will also be a bit of a departure, as so often I refer to things in my more distant past. But more recently, I have been letting myself create time for things that are meaningful to me, that aren't the obligatory things like taking care of kids mm-hmm. or or fulfilling a, a work obligation. So what what I mean is creating time to be creative in the ways that I always that I had promised myself for a long time I would be. I think I've mentioned before this discomfort that comes from breaking a promise you made to yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might liken it to that "what if" life that you use as yes. an example. Yes. I think it relates to that. And so, in the last in the last few years or more, I have been. Yeah, I guess actually it started maybe as long as. I don't know, six years ago, but I started creating space for that. And, and writing crossing the gods was a, was a big example of that. Mm -hmm. And I know that's something that we've yet to deliver on. And I'm sure the fans out there are like, yeah, sure. Whatever your mythical unicorn show that you're going to do. It it is fantastic (laughs) though. It is fantastic. (laughs) Um, but I had never devoted that much time, that much energy and work into something that was my own thing. And um, so so I, that sort of gave me a taste for it. Now, in some ways, f- fans might think, well, but wait, you've, you've pursued acting in your life or, you know, you've done these other things and you're recognized for some things that, you know, I think a lot of people would be happy to be recognized for. And I absolutely am completely... Uh, flattered and honored uh, to have achieved that much and to be relevant to anybody in, in uh, for anything that I've done in my performance. But that's a different thing. And creating my own stuff is probably more similar to how you feel about creating your own music. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and while it's great to participate in other people's ideas, it's another thing to put out your own. So with Crossing the Gods, uh, that started back in 17, 2017, wow. something like that. yeah, yeah. And um, because we had it was shortly after Dark Side of Dimensions and uh, and there was this sense of, hey, yeah, let's let's collaborate. Let's let's do something. And so and I had this idea from way back from when I was in my early 30s um, that what was the template, uh, basically the the main ingredients for what Crossing the Gods became. Mm -hmm. But um uh, with your encouragement and Anthony Salerno's encouragement, um, we we decided to move forward with this concept. And we originally thought we were going to do something much more rudimentary, so that it was primarily going to be voiceover audio with uh, all of our colleagues that fans love, and that there would be like a couple of sketches. Right. And we do like these five minute episodes. We put them on YouTube. And I, I distinctly remember conversations where you were citing, some people might know this, the the video from AHA, Take On Me. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're, they do this wonderful storyboard, sketchy look. And you were saying, yeah, let's just do something that, with that simplicity. And, and maybe we can just, like, when a character is talking, we can just, like, pan across their face a little bit. And, and that simple approach, I think, would have worked and gotten the show out when we said it was going to come out. Right. But stupidly (laughs) or brilliantly, I kept on refining the visual and you guys kept saying, oh, no, wait, let's do that instead. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, and this is a common process. You know, you you work on something and then you, and you actually start coming up with a different result that you like more. And of course that complicates things, but um, I'm sure there's many writers and artists out there that can identify with this story. I'm sure. Well, I mean, t- uh, touching on that point, not to interrupt you, but yeah. touching on that point, please, um, please um, you, you also introduced us both Tony and myself uh, to what your capabilities were with this creation. So when we were starting and mm-hmm. talking about it, we had the idea of like, oh, yeah, we saw the drawings that you have done. And, and it really was about the story. It's, it always should be about the story. It always is, yeah. Um, yeah. But we were like, okay, here's a way to get this, this out. And the format, you know, really focuses on our, our voice acting because that's what people know us for. And that's what we're going to be doing. And this is really just a sort of a support uh, having the visuals. But once, right. Right. once that 
that cork was popped out of that bottle and you were like, by the way, here are my abilities and here's what I'm able to create. And you were also discovering some things with the the programs you were using and the, the model. Yeah, After Effects. Yeah, you were yeah. figuring all these things out. And as you were doing that, you were showing us things, which is probably your own fault. You know, every time you'd show us oh, something, totally. we would go... Uh, that looks really cool. I kind of like that. Um, you know, if we didn't know we had different choices, <laughs> we wouldn't have said any, but, but so oh, there's yeah. another page on the menu. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it, wait, right. Wait, the menu is still being written. So, oh, so yes. Yeah. So go back to what, you know, go back to the story, but that's really what happened was, I, I think you had, you know, you, there was definitely some apprehension about like, you know, doing this and you know is my stuff good enough and is this is this really oh, going to sure. make a difference you want to be the best and we're be. like yeah. yeah it is and once i think you started to feel that that confidence you also started to really develop this style of of visually mm-hmm. sto- storytelling mm-hmm. that needed to be sort of like you're like okay well if we're going to go there i'm going to show you what i can do yeah yeah. Oh, and and like I think a lot of people, um, I have what's in my head, mm-hmm. so I'm going to get closer to that. You know, if yeah, if we if we're, if we're really going to go there, yeah, and yeah, and so I look back on that that time, those couple of years or so, as uh, a really f- um, fertile time creatively, and being able to to write the script and and bounce it off of you guys to get your feedback and your guidance. And I always appreciated that you let me write the story, mm-hmm. but you were just giving me some great reaction to what you were hearing, right? You never said, make this scene happen or don't not, you know, no. you, you always left, let me uh, d- do that part of it. And, but your, your feedback was uh, in, invaluable. And, and then to be able to direct actors mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, and friends uh, uh, and, um, so that was so, so rewarding. And anyway, that never would have happened if I hadn't given myself the space, but I was so drawn into that, no pun intended, um, that I, I felt like it was taking up too much space mm-hmm. and I felt like it's also because we had assigned these these deadlines and we we're going to premiere it by this point and and what have you. And when we had this appearance in Australia, yep. and this is now already in 2019, so not many many months before COVID even really, mm-hmm. and um, so less than a year within COVID being a, a, a worldwide issue. Um, so and and I just felt like completely maxed out, and and I. I, I knew that I was uh, not finding a, a healthy balance. Mm-hmm. So in the intervening years, and, and COVID had a lot to do with just, I mean, everyone having to adjust <laughs> uh, differently. But, uh, and, I have, and I hadn't been able to work on Crossing the God specifically for a long period of time. But I've been able to return to it and also do other things like, I mean, we created this podcast as a concept years before we released it. Yes, and um, and 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 we thought, okay, it's going to take longer for Crossing the Gods, but a podcast is something that we can do more easily. And we want to start uh, a drama production with with creating, a, you know, something, uh, and mainly a, a relationship to our audience. And so uh, th- this this process of like the last couple few years, couple years after after COVID became less of a you have to worry about it every day and change your whole life thing um so i've been able to rebalance my life and uh, and for instance i'm doing a little less teaching now to make time for the andromeda production stuff right, right. and uh, i'm not doing uh, as much as the other uh voiceover stuff that I do. A lot of people think I retired. I didn't retire. I just, I just didn't do as much anime. <laughs> right. Uh, right. But, <laughs> um, so I'd say it's really, I'm still in the process of finding that balance, but having given myself permission, uh, uh, many years ago to just include this whole other element to my life, um, was invaluable. And, um, and also I, uh, within the last year or so, I, I wrote a short story that we're probably going to produce mm-hmm. as, uh, as a little audio, uh, drama. 
exclusive here on audio at, at, at Andromeda Productions. Uh, but um, so again, allowing allowing time for those things. And, and finding that balance, and this balance would be incomplete if I weren't including the time I, I have for my children mm-hmm. and, and trying to be, you know, truly there for them. That, that as a voiceover person, I can work from home much more acceptably, commonly than, than ever before, has been hugely helpful to me as, as a single parent. Yeah, you can uh, imagine. And, I, and I can, I'm literally able to be at home for my kids see them off to school, be here when they come back. Uh, and, you know, if if one of them needs a little uh, extra help with homework, whether it's, you know, practicing for a test or, or you know, uh, a, a certain kind of math problem, I, I'm, I'm glad that I can be there uh, for them uh, for just, you know, the simple thing. Yeah, well, I've always so. thought you've been a sort of family first guy anyway. you I mean, that's even though you, you do a, a fair amount of work I've always thought mm-hmm. that, that in terms of the, you know, and this is me from the outside looking in, um, mm-hmm. it, you know, you are definitely a hands-on parent. You are, you are uh, accessible. You are, you are there for them. Um, I know that we, when we've been on the road together, you've got set times where you, you know, you're, you're like, oh, yeah. hey, I've got it. Yeah. I'm checking in. This is, you know, I don't care what we're doing right now. This is more, this is what I'm doing, which I've always, yeah. I, I just think is, is fantastic. So are there tangible tools that you could share with the listeners that you used to help you shift into the work balance? And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking mm-hmm. about not, not the, the, including the family has always been part of your life, but you, right, right, you right. made, you made shifts in the way that you found time to, or made time for creativity around time for voiceovers and teaching and how you balanced that. What is, is there something that you could share that someone might be able to also use in terms of tools? And I don't mean like a hammer. I just mean like, what did, <laughs> what did you do? I know what I do with that stuff, but I'm just curious what you do. Right, right. I would never presume to uh, prescribe somebody a, a pattern for their life. But what was helpful to me uh, I, I think a couple things. One, I I just talked about how I created more time for my own stuff. That exists along a, a continuum or a scale. I always made time for my own stuff. I have a backlog of of creative story ideas and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but th- so that's always been true of me. But um, it's only been more recently that I actually am willing to commit the time to developing them further. And is that a financial um, choice? Like, did you I think say part of it is? I think you part say, of it you know is I, yeah. I have an, I'm able I, I'm able to do that now. Uh, so that was very fortunate, right? Um, but um, but it was also important to recognizing that it, it was really bothering me that uh, that I had all of these broken promises. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, so, um, and, and another thing, so, so listen to those parts of yourself, uh, and, and don't, and don't be, uh, ashamed, embarrassed to permit yourself, uh, to, to explore those things Mm -hmm. and don't expect yourself to be great all all at once. That's so, that's so dumb. Right. I mean, uh, everyone has that aggravation, but, uh, if you're expecting yourself to be, (laughs) <laughs> as good as the professionals right out of the gate. That is deeply unrealistic. I'm still trying. <laughs> <laughs> if you're able to contribute as little as a dollar a month, consider going to our Patreon page. Visit AndromedaProductions.com and see what's in store. If this is content you enjoy, please like, subscribe, and share on YouTube. So, uh, but I think another thing, and this might sound really i don't know odd but um for me another thing was was sleep yeah yeah so i'm a person who's always struggled with just sleeping whether it's getting to sleep or staying asleep and uh and i got a really good mattress a while ago mm-hmm. and that helped mm-hmm. also you know the energy you expend being a parent and being exhausted helps yeah <laughs> and I think that having that sense of understanding what my body needs to be rested 
gives me also a, a clear understanding of what am I reasonably going to be able to do today mm-hmm. without stressing out, without saying, oh, I'll just go to bed when I'm finished, <laughs> which is how I live right. most of my life. Right. Like, it's like, oh, I'll just stay up till whenever, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like, no, no. I'm, I'm going to get eight hours of sleep or as close as I can to it. <laughs> and what can I really accomplish? So I guess the sleeping thing, in a sense, becomes a time structure element. But it, it also becomes, it also is, for me at least, a recognition of you have physical needs that are okay to have. So Yeah, taking care that, of yourself first. Ex- yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah, that's good. Exactly. I like that. So. Yeah, and I guess you could you could liken it to taking care of myself in a couple ways, mm-hmm. right? Take, taking care of those promises, yep, which you know works on your self esteem or whatever else. But also, yeah, you know, just don't don't burn the midnight oil every day, right? It's not it's not fight or flight every day, <laughs> right? Just like right. What, what is what is actually a sane, manageable way to approach what you can do? No, that's good. That's good advice. That is good advice. Very yeah, and I and I and I you know I've seen the shift and um, you know we mm, become mm. happier when we're when we're doing stuff that we love to do. Um, you know you're still you know you still work in the industry and you you still find time to do that to to pay the bills and that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But you've also found time for you and mm-hmm. you know a, a happier Dan is it makes the, the people around him happier. And it makes and it makes my work work better too. Exactly. Exactly. What about you? Well, you know, um, it's kind of similar. I um, I've gotten to a point now where I don't feel like I am chasing after every gig as much as I used to, and it's not because mm-hmm. I'm a incredibly wealthy man. I just feel like I I in perspective of okay, so if I got those other five. Sh- you know, shows and I was, you know, I got that commercial and I was dubbing these things. And, and if I were doing this and filling my days, you know, constantly with that, um, what, where am I going? What am I, what's my, like, where's the finish line? What am I trying to do? Uh, There is no finish line. It's supposed to be Mm -hmm. the journey that I'm, that I'm on. Well, if my journey is only filled with that and that's my motivation, then I find that there's no time for what I really want to be doing. And mm-hmm. my creativity, yes, primarily is in songwriting, but I, my day, like if, if someone followed me around all day, the things that I do for creative outlets are everything from. You sent me a picture of your misting pergola. Yes. So I do a lot of DIY projects. I love to do, uh, you know, I like to decorate the house. I like to, I like to build things. I like to, uh, I like to organize. I, I talked about that sort of the OCD side of my personality. Yeah. Like I like that stuff. Um, I like to use my label maker on, and, and, oh, look, now everything's where it's supposed to be, you know, because I have <laughs> too much stuff and uh, I could get overwhelmed by that easily. But what, what, the balance that that um, of of being a master of my two domains is that's what we are talking about, right? Um, right, right. <laughs> right? Um, is that I find that there are situations where it's work related, and I'm talking voiceover stuff, where I mm. just say I don't know if I want to dedicate that much time in my life to this, not because it's not an interesting project or not because it's financially a good project, but it's taking too much time out of my day and away from these other things that don't pay the bills, but make me happy. And so I've been much stricter about um, when it's time for work and when it's time for play. And Mm -hmm. um, I jump around into every bit of it if i have a if i have uh if uh, let's say i have a couple of auditions to do today i'll break them up throughout the day or i might save them for later or whatever because at this particular moment i'm not feeling in the mood for that i'm going to jump over and start working on a song and you know what i I'm, just nothing's happening with the song i'm not going to push it i'm going to go out back and start worrying about the way that the herbs should be planted in my backyard i mean it's really mm-hmm. i'm i'm all over the place but by having that freedom 
once again, working from home, which is, thank goodness I have that situation. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I have that freedom, I can jump in the booth and do something or walk outside and do something or go downstairs and do something, you know, sit at the piano, whatever it is. Um, they're, they're, all the opportunities are there in front of me. And um, if I'm feeling it, then that's what I go and do. And that's mm-hmm. different than the way it used to be, especially being in New York when, you know, I, I, I had a staff job as a director and then I was also running around and doing all this stuff. I had none of that free time. By moving down here, not only do I have more of that time to focus on myself, but um, mm-hmm. I'm even stricter about setting aside that Eric time, that Eric creative time, um, or that mm-hmm. or that downtime. Uh, you talk about the sleep thing. I'm totally yeah. a night owl, and when things you know yeah, yeah, come too. to me, yeah. it's like sometimes it's like it's like two o'clock in the morning, and I I pop yeah, up yeah. and I jot down a lyric in my you know and and the notes on my phone um, reminds me of like when uh, Keith Richards wrote Satisfaction by you know singing into a cassette recorder and then snoring for forty five minutes. Um, but it's like it's it, it's that kind of like you never know when. That stuff is going to hit you. But um, I have definitely turned things down, walked away from other things because I want that balance. I want to be able to do mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. both the work side and yeah, and also the family side. You know, I was, you know, absentee father. You know, when when I was in New York, I was working all the time. I didn't really get to spend a lot of time with my with my daughters. And, you know, they're mm-hmm. both off at school. So, I mean, they're not at home. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but, you know, trying to sort of uh, get back into some family first priorities, especially, you know, with with my wife. And it, that that's also become um, my balance is that. I mean, even mm-hmm. just just today, I said to her, you know, we do so much traveling together. I mean, I'm very grateful that um, I have an opportunity to take her with me when I'm doing a lot of my um, appearances, and um, because I I'd really rather spend time with her than without her. So um, if if she can come along with me and can put up with the fact that I'm working on a lot of our trips, then um, that's great. But there should also be trips where I'm not working. And so even just yesterday, right. I said. Let's just pick some like some weekend and just just do something just together where, you know, it's not a a work related trip Um, (laughs) like that would not have been something that I would have even suggested, you know, 10 years ago like that. That was not where my brain was. Uh, my mm-hmm. brain was like, but if I go away, then, I mean, that could be a potential uh, convention weekend or wait a second, I'm going to miss a Friday and a Monday, but I might have an audition that I have to do or even a booking. I don't think that way anymore. I really don't. Right. And, it, and and I, I'm going to say it again. It's not because I'm now independently wealthy. It's because those things are not going to drive me every day. They're just not going to do that anymore. What is going to drive me every right. day is, right. you know, what, 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 did, what did I make today? What did I create today? Or what did I do for me? You're talking about the sleep thing for your health. I've been like, working now on taking care of myself a little bit more, you know, having, having a, a, you know, a partner that, that is ill means that a lot of times you are focused on that person, which you should be, but you sometimes neglect yourself. And, right. you know, I'm, I'm trying to lose some weight, get back into shape a little bit um, for no reason other than I just want to feel good. You know, I just want to feel good. And if I'm, and if I'm feeling good doing that and also creating, um, I'm just going to be a nicer person to be around. Um, Absolutely. And that's and Absolutely. that's and that's my balance is to be able to say no sometimes. Yeah. And it can feel really seductive to say yes to the work, especially earlier on when you're younger. Mm-hmm. And because I mean, you you use the somewhat uh, insulting term absentee father. And I am certain that most of what was going through your mind when you were working yourself that hard is I'm doing this for my family. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 It was all, it was, it was, I was driven by the income. I had, I had responsibilities from the house to the, to the kids, you know, um, you know, to, to taking care of everything. Um, that financial burden, um, it wasn't to be the most famous voice actor ever. That was not my goal. It was that my, Yeah. yeah, my goal was how many jobs can I do in the shortest amount of time so that I can make money to take care of my family. And that right. that's fine for 
part of what you want to do in your life, but right. that that's not what I want on my tombstone. He did a How lot many, of voiceover work. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> that many that many many people are grateful. And I'm for. grateful that that's my career, but you know, it shouldn't yeah. it shouldn't exhaust me to a point where I don't have an opportunity to also so enjoy that, um, yeah. the other things that I want to that I want to create. How many years do you think you live like that? Oh my goodness. So I started working in the industry, like at 18, 19 years old. I mean, I've been a voice actor for 35 years and, uh-huh. you know, my, my kids are in their twenties. So, uh, you know, I would say that pretty much for 20, 25 years, well, no, because I've been down here for 10. So probably, no, maybe I would say, let's say 15 years of hardcore mm-hmm. pushing myself. You know, I was, I was the senior voice director at four kids for 10 years. So, um, okay, there you go. so there you go. So, um, you know, I would say 15 years of that, of that drive, which was great. I mean, you know, I'm very thankful to the, for the work, for the characters that I got to play, for the people I got to work with, to the friendships I've made. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I found ways to still do very cool musical things during that time. Um, but there were definitely sacrifices that, uh, um, you know, from family time to to even just downtime for myself, that uh, I think definitely affected a lot of a lot of things. Um, you know, talking about the personality changes and things like that. Um, I was on edge because I was living on the edge. Right. So pushing yourself that hard. Yeah, and I don't. I look. I don't sleeping mi- at the studio so you could get notes for the movie. The oh my goodness! Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect example of that. I mean, you know, nowadays I would just have to say we'll deal with. Like, I'm going home and we'll talk about this in the morning. Like, they, you know, <laughs> like you know. I mean, I, I don't want to say that that you know, putting my foot down and being like a like a hard you know ass about it. But it's like I just I feel like. There, there was, there was a time where I couldn't say no because of the responsibilities, and also it was, you know, th- th- I mean, it was mm-hmm. the, that was the time. Like it was a different time being a voice actor in New York. Um, it's very competitive, but also very lucrative. I mean, I, I did very well there, and I'm thankful for that time. But um, you know, as someone who knows me quite well, um, you know, that was my gig. My soul is as a songwriter that's that's my soul mm-hmm. that's who i am mm-hmm. as a person so um yeah i i i think i think 15 years of that was a lot and i probably should have made the move and the change years earlier but look i mean i don't want to you know i don't want to look mm. back and say you know uh, what hind- yeah. hindsight is 2020 20, right um i don't regret yeah. that time but i right. definitely right. prefer the, the balance I have now. Right, right. I th- and it's so tempting with that hindsight 2020 thing, which I think is uh, certainly an apt phrase, but I also think, or I wonder, hindsight is also a little bit of wishful thinking. Mm-hmm. Because there are reasons why you didn't do things before when you did them. Now, maybe you think that you should never have had those other things in your mind or as part of your psychological mechanism or however you want to look at it. But um, but you are who you are. Yes. And and all of those steps lead you to to now. And uh, I'm, I'm very glad to know you as you are now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Not so much before. No. Just kidding. No, no, this, no, no. I had to do that. You know, that's a joke. I always have to do that. <laughs> like, I say something nice, and then I do something that's really, uh, you know, uh, mean. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's my thing. Um, well, very good. Was a, uh, Also, during that time, there was a part of you that knew it was running out of oxygen, that it wasn't getting what it needed. Was that something that you were always aware of? Did it become a big moment of realization or was it this quiet voice that you were always like, I'll get to you later. I'll get to you later. No, I, you know, I, I think, I think I, I don't think I was as conscious of it as I should have been. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned this on one of our previous podcasts. My, it was actually uh, my ex-wife Jenna, who the, the night that she, 
uh, came downstairs into our basement where our washer dryer was and right. found me sitting on the on the washing machine writing a song because it was the only quiet place in the house where I wouldn't disturb the kids because it was so late at night when I would get home from the studio and I and I wanted to write where she said this is ridiculous like you you know you have a job like this you live in a house like this and this is where you have to create this doesn't make any sense um that was really an epiphany that was like you know what mm. all right then the, we're going to do something different uh, or at least we're going to try um yeah I, you know it goes to the same analogy of the not knowing what you're dealing with until you step away from it until mm. I really stepped mm-hmm. away from the rat race, I just thought that that was the way that you did this. You know, I'm going to work myself to death in in voice acting and directing and producing and find the time to play music and record and tour and and figure out where that fits in. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, but if I'm only doing that, what did I just leave out? Time with the family. So, so how do I, how do, you know, I just figured that's what we do in the, in the entertainment industry. That's, that's why yeah. all these stories are like that because you can't have it both ways. Well, you know what? You can have it both ways because you can figure out a way to make these things work for yourself. Do I need the fame and fortune as a musician? No. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the outlet, the creativity. I need mm-hmm. that to be happy. It's part of who I am. Right, right. So right. I needed to make that part of my existence. So instead of thinking this is the only way to do it by by killing myself, doing every everything, um, <laughs> and, 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 and missing out on some very important things, I'm going to find a way to m- make it so that I can do a little bit of all of it because that's really what I need. I find if I don't travel with my guitar or some uh, instrumental mm-hmm. mix of something that I'm working on, for those of you who have, might have heard me talk about this, I, that's how I write a lot is that I will I will write, I will record um, what I'm working on and travel with that um, without vocals so that I can sit there and write lyrics to it because uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I usually write the music first. So if I don't travel with that kind of, oh, and I can work on this when I'm feeling it, like on the plane or whatever, um, I get itchy. I get uncomfortable. Like I, right, I, I right. miss it. Even just knowing sometimes if I, you know, if I'm, I, that I have a guitar in the, in the trunk of my car, if I'm going to some, you know, party, we're all going to hang out near a campfire or something. I better have my guitar nearby so that well, if, even if you don't use it, yeah, you'll feel better knowing it's there. I just there. need yeah, to know yeah. it's there. And, and, and that's kind of, that, that's kind of the, the, the choices, you know, put those things uh, at your fingertips, you know, put, make, make it available, make it available and, and you'll mm-hmm. find, you'll find your satisfaction, you know, not necessarily, uh, as a paycheck. So, so you just said make available, I use the phrase making space for, mm-hmm. for something. And yeah, so I guess if, to get back to your question is, is you know, is there something that you would recommend? Um, I, I think, Yeah, something along those lines, allowing yourself the permission. Um, But these things can't exist in in only your imagination. Right. So you you have to make space for them in the real world. Yeah. And and sometimes what prevents people from trying something they think they really want to do is the fear that they won't succeed at it or it'll they'll you know, maybe, maybe they're not really talented for this certain thing or that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And, and to that, I say it's worth finding out. And, and you know, what, what, what's the worst thing that could happen that you, that you find you should be doing something else is not a bad result. Yeah. It's another starting point. And does, you know? does your creativity really need to have judgment like, does, <laughs> well, there's that, you too. know, does, what, I who mean, are you doing it for? Yeah. I mean, if we're talking yeah. about a career choice, which that's, that's good too, right? If People we, will judge you. Right. Yes. And you will that, be judged. That's fine. But, yeah. but if we're talking about, you know, just connecting with something that is part of who you are and a way that you can express yourself, um, you might not be the greatest guitar player or you might not be the greatest singer or the greatest mm-hmm. lyricist or the greatest poet. But if you put something together that helps you get your idea across or helps you express your emotions or even connects with one other person. Um, Mm -hmm. That's really, that's the satisfaction in it. 
not necessarily the the, the you know the pot of gold there. And um, right. But yes, if you're if you're trying to follow a, a career path uh, of a financial choice, yes, you know there's going to be that sort of litmus test of are you good enough, whatever that means. Right. Are you right. the flavor of the month? Um, but but <laughs> right. but the yeah. other side of it is, you know. If you make the time for yourself, and even if you're just painting at home and you have a collection of wonderful paintings that you have for yourself while you do your day job doing something else, at least you have, you've you've made that time for yourself to be creative. And you'll probably enjoy your day job more knowing that when you, that, that when you got home, you painted this picture that maybe no one will see, but you feel good about. But, but yourself. you get something out of it because it matters to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, very good. Well, uh, let's bring this episode to a close. All right. Uh, and uh, again, thank you for sharing so much, Eric. Uh, always glad to hear what you have to say. You too, Dan. You too, Dan. Obviously, you have something creative to go and do because you want to wrap this up. But that's that's fine. I, 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 this whole time, I've been like, "Come on, shut up already! I got something I got to draw." <laughs> that's not true. No. Um, so. Uh, many people will say that conversation itself is an art. Mm-hmm. And I always enjoy participating in creating some with you. Thank you. You too. And thank you to all of our followers and listeners who've been joining us on these episodes of The Heart of the Cards. I can't believe we're already at 17. Uh, and if you are so inclined, please like and subscribe. Uh, that that helps, or just like, just the the like is even more important, I think, <laughs> than the subscribing. <laughs> but uh, um, and uh, and just know that Eric and I are so grateful uh, to have you guys with us along the way. And we look forward to the next time we can share a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Thanks for listening to the Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Adromeda Productions, we wish you well. Adromeda, always a sound choice.